What's shaking, nerds? Welcome back to another Tarkov video, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 mistakes most new players make when they're playing Tarkov. And the reason I know this is because I've made these mistakes. So we're going to be talking about ammo types, we're going to be talking about how to get rid of gear fear, and so much more. So stick around, you nerds. The first tip I want to talk to you guys about is ammo itself. Now, in a lot of these tip guides, they'll tell you, hey, you're using the wrong ammo. Make sure you're using the right ammo. That's not always doable when you're a newer player and you don't have a lot of ammo unlocked. So what I do want to get across to you guys right now is understanding the ammo you're using. So it's very hard for us to look at PS ammo for the 545 on the left, and then we look at BS ammo for the 545 on the right, and being able to tell the difference, there's not like, a color gradient that we can tell like ooh, the red stuff's better than the blue stuff it, it's just one of those things where you have to find out and that's why this all-in-one ammo table uh thank you again to no food after midnight if you guys don't know him he's an amazing content creator go check out his work on twitch or youtube and thank you again if we look at this table we can see that the ps ammo is 50 damage and 22 penetration where bs ammo it's less damage at 40 but the penetration value is super high. I will have this ammo chart in the description down below and also no food after midnight's Twitch stream will be linked there also. So when you're using this ammo, all I want you guys to know is what you should be doing with this ammo. So what I mean by that is say it's early wipe. PS ammo, you can generally shoot anywhere because not many people are running around with a lot of armor at this time, but say it's mid wipe, and you're running around with PS armor, you're probably going to want to aim for the legs always. That's where you're going to want to focus your PS ammo because there's no armor on the legs. So you're going to leg meta them to death. So just understand what ammo you're bringing into the match to know where to shoot the person and, and the best chances you have at killing someone generally. The next tip I want to talk about is how some people do use offline mode incorrectly. And now if you're going to just learn all the maps, and you just want to run and gun really fast or even if you don't want to play with any scavs on the map and you're just learning extracts good go do that because i think that is the number one thing you guys that's not in this tip list but learn the extracts learn one map at a time learn one focus on it learn it until the back of your hand go on to the next map but what i mean by using it incorrectly is say you have a bunch of gear that you're scared to use because of gear fear but you want to practice playing an online mode but offline with scavs and whatnot and you put on all this sick gear and you're just on offline mode killing people left right and center and then you go online and scavs are killing you left right and center and you're getting frustrated well it's probably because you're using the wrong gear you're using gear you wouldn't normally use in online mode so what i always tell people is if you're going into offline mode make sure you're using gear that you actually use online so if you don't use usually an M4, but instead you use an AK-74N that's not really modded out or anything, use that AK-74N in offline mode. Get better with that one gun. Get used to it. Get used to that recoil in offline. Get used to sh getting headshots on scavs. Because if you're just using the best of the best gear because you're not worried about it, it's really not making you a better player in the long run. Because in the end, you're using the total opposite side of the spectrum when you're in an online match. So just make sure you're using gear that you would use online when you're playing offline. Tip number three is running and gunning. And I have to tell you, when I first started this game, I was so, so guilty of this. I come from the background of Halo, Call of Duty on the Xbox, where sound doesn't really matter. You know, you're just running around anyways, like a frantic lunatic. So who cares? In this game, audio cues are like 80% of this game and they make a lot of noise the trees everything when you're running by them when it, they're rustling next to you i can't tell you how much i kill people now when i'm just taking a second i'm going slow i'm listening to audio cues and i can just hear people going full force and customs and and that's like my favorite place to really listen is I, I love customs you guys it's one of my favorite maps i, I know a lot of you guys are going to hate on me right now but it is a good map when you're around the three story or the two story dorm, there's so many trees around you that if you hit a tree just a little, you can definitely hear someone in the distance. So a tip I want to tell you guys is this isn't Call of Duty. 
take your time relax really stand there and listen sometimes you know take take a couple of steps look around take a second to listen keep moving and keep doing that until you know like a path because say again customs there's a path away around into the trees that you cannot make sound but you can keep going forward you don't just have to barrel straight through right so just make sure you're taking that time and, and listening and making sure oh i made a lot of noise on that one i should stand still for a second just to make sure no one's waiting for me i, I can't tell you how much my game just progressed when i just took my time and yes it isn't for everyone to do that and there are some players that can just run and gun okay there are some amazing players but but they know everything about the game they know where the sounds are coming from and in this game it is sometimes hard to understand where the sound is coming from i'm not going to say that audio is a hundred percent amazing but in general you can tell where the audio is coming from or what area and the more you play the more you, you'll figure that out so just take your time and know that oh if i step here I'm gonna make a lot of friggin' noise. But if I step over here, I'll make way less noise. Or if I crouch walk over this, it's way less noise. Just make sure you're not running and gunning, you guys. Tip number four. I'm actually doing karate chops right now. I know you guys can't see them, but I'm doing them. Uh, tip number four is not having a goal when you're going into a map. Most of the time, especially early wipe, early when I'm, I'm low level, I have a goal when I'm going into a map. So if I'm on the Salua kits and I need to find five Saluas, I'm going to a map where I know they are and that's what I'm trying to find right away. Now, not to say that you always have to stick to this goal, but always have a mission in mind. And then if, if things change, you know, say you kill a couple of players and you loot a lot of stuff and you just want to get the hell out of there, give her. But just make sure you have a goal in mind, where you want to go on the map, what you're trying to loot, what you're looking for because tasks are so important especially for beginning players you want to make sure you're leveling up your traders so you can unlock those better ammos those better guns and so forth and so forth so always make sure you have a goal in mind and how to get that goal done so if you're going to try to get say saluas okay i'm going to shoreline where do saluas spawn on here let's do some research or hey I, I need Saluas and I'm going to customs. Okay, where do they usually spawn on customs? Let's find that out and then have a goal to to go there and try to at least look for them. And then if there, nothing comes of it, okay, then you can kind of de deviate from your plan and go, okay, I'm just going to kill a couple scavs, loot them and, and get the hell out. But just always have a goal in mind when you're starting up a match. Okay, we're at halfway point. Number five is trades. Know at least a few of these trades and they're going to help you out so much at the beginning phase of your Tarkov career. So the first one I want to talk about is Prapper level one. He has two Blackrock chest rigs and that trades for an AK 74 N. This is a great gun. You can find a lot of these black rocks from uh, scavs, collect them. And if you need to use them, you need to use them. But if you want a gun, just know you can trade two of these for an AK 74 N. Another weapon at your disposal that you can't buy right away is actually hand grenades. So if you collect two Zippo lighters, you can uh, give these to Peacekeeper. He'll give you one hand grenade for him. Hand grenades are invaluable early game. Gets you out of some weird sticky situations. Say someone's hiding in the bush or behind a rock or something and you want to get them out of there. You can throw that grenade. They'll run away and you'll be able to take some pot shots at them and hopefully kill them. And now the last two items are my like go to 100% always be keeping these items because they're medical items. And in Tarkov, you're always going to be using medical items over and over again. So in the long run, this is going to save you a lot of money. Now, my first thing is duct tape to duct tape trades for a car first aid kit. Oh, you know, early you can only grab AI twos and bandages, but with this car, uh, first aid kit it does both of these things and way better than those two items on their own so you're going to be using this a lot and the next thing is something that you even use way when you're level say 30 or 40 it's painkillers these will always be in your gamma probably or at least at least on you somewhere and so if you collect two matches you can trade two of those for painkillers this is going to save you a lot of money it's going to be so beneficial if you do these trades over and over again and i i do them 
regularly still now at level 50. Tip number six is something that is all over the internet if you search for it. There's so many opinions on it and guess what? I've got an opinion on it and I'm gonna tell you my ideas on how you should fix it. So the big thing in here guys is gear fear. It's a super common feeling people have in Tarkov, especially when they're newer. So what happens is say you find something really rad or you killed out a buttered player, killed out, that doesn't make sense. But anyways, you know what I mean? You kill someone that's buttered out. They have a lot of this cool gear and now you have all this gear in your inventory, but you don't want to use it. You're scared to use it. My my tip on, on gear fear is just get rid of it. So what I mean by that is sell it to either on the flea market or sell it to the appropriate trader and get the money for it. And then maybe you can buy like say two or three loadouts of what you're comfortable with and you'll be able to find more cool gear with it. So what happened to me is I had all this cool gear on my first wipe. I, I didn't want to use it. I was scared. It was jamming up my inventory. Uh, and then what happened is before I knew it, the wipe came and I, I lost it anyways. So why not just sell it instead of being scared to use it? And A, you got more inventory space. B, you're going to have a whole bunch of loadouts now to use to find more gear. And then eventually you're going to get more comfortable. It does usually take one whole wipe for you to get comfortable with stuff and realize, hey, it's just pixels, you guys. This is just pixels. But until you can realize that, just sell the shit. Tip number seven is something that I am, have been guilty about a lot of times. And that's why I'm making this video, guys, because a lot of the stuff I'm guilty of and I had to learn it the hard way. And I wish someone told me and maybe I just didn't look for it. Maybe I knew better, but I'm just, you know, I'm Canadian, so I'm not all there. But here's the thing. Looting right after a kill. This is the surest way for you to die. The next you're going to be the next death. It's easy because maybe they don't have a teammate, but you making all this noise, someone might be running to your location. So when you kill someone, just reassess the situation, you know, take a look maybe get another angle on the body, keep an eye on it, see if someone's going to go to it and, and just, you know, assess your surroundings, you guys, because I'm guaranteeing you there's going to be another person either with them or coming towards you. So don't get too crazy. Don't get too, you know, loot drooly and, and, and want to go after that loot right away because it'll all be there once you kill everyone. The loot will all be there. Just kill everyone first. Tip number eight is something you don't really think about a lot, but it is make sure you have enough stamina before you get into a firefight. Yes, there's a lot of times you don't know you're going to get into a firefight, so you don't know to have stamina, but there are a lot of times you do know that you're about to get into a firefight by either you can hear someone in a building or in the bushes or just ahead of you. So just take a second and recoup that stamina because I can't tell you how many times I've died because I couldn't run away from a grenade. I couldn't run to cover. It's just something you don't really think about when you're new to Tarkov. You're just worried about surviving, but just make sure, you know, look at your stamina bar, keep in the back of your head, how much stamina you have. And that way, you know, you're out. So maybe we should call this know your outs tip number eight. No, no, no. Keep an eye on your stamina. There you go. Tip number nine is something that like I get told, why the hell do I do it? And I think people are so wrong. And that's insure your shit, people. Insure it. It's there for a reason, and I get so much stuff back. So there's two ways of looking at this, okay? One, say this is early wipe, and you die, okay? Not many people have a lot of big bags, so they can't take everything. So say they kill two or three players, they might leave some of your stuff behind, and guess what? That's worth a lot of rubles. At the beginning of a wipe, it, man money is very important and say it's midwipe so you join later on no one wants your pp19 or your ak-74n that's not really modded so they're not going to take it but to you it does mean a lot because you spent a lot of good rubles on it so if i were you i would just ensure everything you can you know it's generally not that much especially with early stuff that doesn't cost a lot so people ensure your shit we're on our final tip and I just want to say thank you nerds so much for watching. 
Uh, even if you guys are waiting for some more nonsense so you can make fun of me in the comments. Hey, thanks for just watching the video, you guys. I don't care if it, you hate on it. I just appreciate you, nerds. So my final tip is you don't have to kill every scav. Now, this might sound ridiculous because you're like, but geeks, I want that looty loot. I know you want that looty loot. But here's the thing. Say you're passing a road, right? And you can leave a scav uh, alive and he doesn't see you so you can slip by him and you go towards, you know, further down the road. If you hear gunshots behind you now from the road, you know it's that scav fighting someone. And even if he died, you know there's a player over there. So you can get into position, you can get ready, and now you can get not only that scav's loot because he's probably going to loot him, but you can get his loot. I, I really hope that makes sense to you guys because I've used this many times and I have to tell you guys it works amazingly so thank you nerds so much for watching this i hope you liked it if you did think about hitting the subscribe button think about hitting that bell also know i do stream five days a week on twitch.tv i start at 7 a.m pacific standard time monday to friday and i'm usually on till about three so thank you nerds so much and i'll see you guys later